for being here. It's an honor to join the Massachusetts Lieutenant Governor, our uh, Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll, also Secretary of uh, Veteran Services, John Santiago, and Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus. I'd also like to acknowledge that our state representative, uh, Christine Barber, is here, and our counselor at large, Kristen Strezzo. Today, we are here to celebrate a crucial step forward in the Commonwealth's Housing Outreach for Placement efforts, or known as HOPE, to support veterans facing untenable living situations. The $7 million in ARPA funding being awarded to nonprofits across Massachusetts represents a powerful investment in helping all veterans find safe and supportive housing. All of us in the greater Boston area deeply understand the importance of providing our veterans with resources they deserve. Our veterans have sacrificed so much for our freedoms and security, so it is not only our duty, but it is also our honor to ensure that when they arrive home, the resources are in place to help them thrive. The funding will empower nonprofits to continue their vital work, offering veterans a chance to rebuild their lives with dignity and respect. It is a testament to our collective commitment to leave no veteran behind. I would like to express my gratitude to the Lieutenant Governor, uh, Kim Driscoll, S Secretary Santiago, and Secretary Augustus for their unwavering dedication to this cause. Together, we make a difference, one step at a time towards ending veterans' homelessness in our state. And now I'd like to introduce our Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Always great to be in Somerville as former co formerly colleagues. It's always great to be with you as well. And so grateful to be joined by so many in our veteran community, uh, Charles Gagnon and everyone at the Veterans for America for housing us all and the great work that you do every single day. Obviously with our two rock star secretaries, our veteran secretary, John Santiago, Housing and Livable Communities at Augustus. We spend a lot of time together because this is an important issue for us. Rep Barber, thank you so much. This is really about team and partnership. I'm wearing my Team Massachusetts bracelet, nice. and um, it really is about uh, ensuring that we have partners in the legislature and at the local level, the mayor, city councilors, who are so supportive. And I think we've got members from our end homeless, uh, homelessness, uh, end veteran homelessness advisory commission as well. I want to thank you for the work you're doing to help set the stage for programs just like this one and being able to help us assist with what we think is a key goal. And frankly, for all the veterans who are here, for your service, I'm a, I'm a Navy brat and spent a lot of time being deployed to different bases as my dad celebrated his career. And when you're part of a military family, it's pretty special and pretty challenging at times. So opportunities for us to work together are really important. You know, I'm so grateful to be part of a, a team leading Massachusetts. The governor and I are fortunate to be the first female team leading the corner office. With that comes um, immense gratitude, but also immense responsibility. And I can tell you that Governor Healy has made something very clear to our administration, and that is that we want Massachusetts to be the undisputed leader when it comes to serving, supporting, and respecting veterans and their families. It's one of the reasons that we're here. We're certainly a state that wants to make sure that we're veterans fought revolutionary battles going back almost 250 years, that Massachusetts veterans are the best served. They've sacrificed, they've helped us develop this great nation. We want to honor that legacy in more than just words and really in actions. And that's why we've appointed the state's first cabinet level secretary uh, in Dr. John Santiago. That's going to enable us to expand veteran engagement to improve services statewide. We have always been a state that has frankly been a leader in de delivering benefits. And how do we get better at it? Uh, we want to make sure we're going from good to great in this space and we couldn't have found anybody better to help us than John. It's why we've made investments in our homes in both uh, Holyoke and Chelsea. That's funding that was secured with both federal and state partners. Again, that team approach is what seems to work here, ensuring that we're going to make the in generation, generational investments we need to to serve veterans for decades to come. And it's why most recently we, for, we uh, filed the HERO Act, 
the most comprehensive veterans services legislation in over 20 years. It would increase benefits, expand access to mental health care, remove the fee for specialty veterans plates, among other things. A host of opportunities there for us to strengthen our efforts to support veterans. We're grateful for the care and effort the legislature is putting into this legislation and know that uh, it will be forthcoming before the legislative session ends, I believe, correct? Yes, all right, good stuff. <laughs> Um, we're also really looking at this long-standing issue that we, I think, all agree in this room and many more who aren't here, that simply should not exist, and that is veteran homelessness. In March, we launched what we consider to be the biggest investment to end veteran homelessness in Massachusetts. That goal is to really identify and reach every single veteran in our state, and that starts in communities, just like here in Somerville who might be struggling with homelessness, whether that's housing security now or in sometime down the road in the future. We want to meet our veterans where they're at, understand their challenges, many of whom have layered challenges uh, that, that we need to tend to. And we know these folks were here for us. We want to be here for them. Um, today, we take a big step forward in expanding this work and announcing the allocation of $6.7 million in American Rescue Plan federal funds to enhance outreach and case management services aimed at eradicating veteran homelessness right here in Massachusetts. That's a big number, it's a worthy effort, and we know we've got the partners to do it. Funding right here for housing outreach to placement effort or the HOPE campaign, and this is an initiative under the broader end veteran homelessness initiative. That means supporting that person-to-person -person work. This is the stuff that's on the ground ensuring that we're in communities, going to where our homeless vets may be, and to then provide permanently safe housing options for these folks. It's gonna support the work of, um, I, I think, our skilled individuals, right? like we see right here at VOA in Massachusetts. There's no better peer-to-peer -peer program to help ensure that we're improving the lives of veterans every single day. And I really wanna congratulate and thank organizations who will be doing this work. So these are grants that are going to be going to veteran service agencies to do that on the ground work, to help make those connections, build that trust, put that pipeline in place so we can make sure people have safe and secure homes who are our vets. That's Volunteers of America, New England Center and Home for, for Veterans, Soldier On In, Clear Path for Veterans New England, Veterans Inc., and the Cape and Islands Veterans Center. These are proven organizations that have longstanding relationships with veterans who have been doing this work, who we will now be able to partner with enhance those efforts, ensure we're connecting with people in the places they are, helping end this and eradicate veteran homelessness now. And if we can do it now, we know that will build for years to come. So we can't say thank you enough to the organizations doing this work, cer certainly to our veterans. Um, as someone, as I said, who grew up in a military family, I know what that sacrifice is for the folks who served in our military branches. Our administration strives each day to get better, to find ways to do more. It is, uh, as I said earlier, uh, with gratitude that we're here, but it's also a responsibility. And we have a sense of urgency. The governor is, we're hustling. We're, <laughs> she's keeping us on our toes to make sure as we make these investments, we strengthen these partnerships, and then we do the work that people uh, are committed to having us do, and that is making Massachusetts the best place to live, to raise a family, to go to work, to attend school, building a commonwealth that's more competitive, more affordable, and more equitable. This is the heart of that work, ensuring that we're taking care of our veterans and making it possible to put our very values and our words into action. So I'm thrilled to be here, as I said, with members of our team, and we're so fortunate that we have not only an individual who is a member of the armed services who currently serves in, in the Guard, but also is a physician leading our veteran service cabinet. It's my uh, pleasure to be able to introduce Dr. John Santiago. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you to the mayor, Valentine, and the VOA for hosting us today. I think in my third or fourth month as secretary, it was one of my first visits in the entire Commonwealth. And I came here and I was inspired by the stories that I heard, that I learned. I got to chat with Melvin for a while before this event got started to hear about his story and how this place has changed his life and just the work that you're doing all across the state. We couldn't be more honored to be here in this place, really just showing what can be done for our veteran community uh, in the Commonwealth. LG, uh, your commitment and leadership on veteran issues uh, has been remarkable from day one. Yes, you're a Navy brat, but you care about these issues. It's because of the LG and Governor Healy that we are investing more in veteran services than we have ever had before in the Commonwealth. It's because of Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll that we put forward the most comprehensive veterans legislation more than 20 years, right? And it's because of them that we're investing $20 million 
to end veteran homelessness, the largest dedicated investment ever for veteran homelessness. And we're excited to be a part yeah. of that. Yeah. And as much as they are prioritizing veterans, I have to tell you, one of their main priorities is housing. First, second, and third, right? And they told us from the very beginning, each and every one of us in the cabinet, listen, I know you're busy with your own shops, but housing is so important to us because without housing, we can't get the medical care we need, we can't get the job, we can't secure the education that we want. So sh they challenged each and every one of us to get active in the housing space. And we took that challenge seriously, and we did that. We thought about where we could pull funding from to support folks in a very holistic, comprehensive manner. So in March of last of this, uh, this year, we put forward this plan, $20 million, to do just that. It's a five-pillar plan. I think the five pillars are listed right there. And, and this is pillar one. And this is one of the most important pillars because it's about that outreach, that proactivity, that engagement with folks. Knowing, as I do with my patients, that if you give someone a key to their apartment or their house, that's not enough, right? It's about providing the comprehensive services that the veteran needs, whether it's mental health, whether it's support with job placement, whether it's education. That's what organizations like VOA and the rest of them that are awarded are committed to doing. Listen, we know them. We work with them. We trust them. We've partnered with them on a variety of different issues. And they're the organizations that are going to get us to functional zero. So I'm proud to be here today as a veteran, as the Secretary of Veteran Services, to really recognize these organizations and this $6.7 million that's going to lead us to a place where we can get to functional zero. And I'm proud to be doing that, not just alone in our secretariat. I mean, this really is a team game. We talked about the partnerships with our, in our community, with VOA and others, the cities and towns, the legislature, but also across the secretariats. In this administration, it's the first time we've had a secretary of veteran services, but it's also the first time we've had a secretary of housing and livable communities. So when I talked to Secretary Gustus about this idea, he was on board from day one. Our teams have worked closely together to get us here today, and there's still so much work, more work to do, but we're committed, there, we're committed to getting there with each and every one of you. So without further ado, my partner in crime on this issue, Secretary Augustus. Thank you, Secretary. First, it's great to be here in Somerville, probably one of the most pro-housing communities in the Commonwealth. And I appreciate the mayor's leadership and, and all the folks here in Somerville. <clears throat> and it is an honor to be here uh, with the Lieutenant Governor, uh, and I know uh, Governor Healy is here in spirit. They gave us the very clear charge, uh, not only around housing, but specifically around veterans housing. This is a priority. Work together. Get this done. Tell us what you need, uh, and we're going to be there. And to their word, the governor and lieutenant governor have provided every resource necessary to get the job done. And at the point of this is Secretary Santiago, who knows this space, who knows the players, who knows the issues and the challenges that our vets face, uh, and brings that informed uh, understanding to the work, educating all of us on the cabinet and throughout the administration. And like a good surgeon, bringing in the various tools and instruments that he needs at different times to get the job done. Uh, and that's literally what today is about. <clears throat> this first tranche of money that is being announced is making sure we're meeting the veterans where they are. Where they are. Dealing with the unique challenges, traumas, uh, things that have caused their homelessness, understanding, doing it with compassion and empathy, uh, and then building that relationship with them so that we can connect them with services. And my job really is to work in concert with Secretary Santiago to build enough units, to create enough options so as we bring those homeless vets off the street or out of shelter, we have appropriate, safe, healthy, and dignified homes for every single person who's worn the uniform uh, and supported our country. So it is our honor at HLC. Uh, to be charged by the governor, lieutenant governor, with this project and to be working side by side with Secretary Santiago and his team. So congratulations to all the recipients of the grants today. Thank you for the work that you do on behalf of our veterans. <clears throat> now it's my responsibility to introduce uh, our host today. Uh, 
And Charles is someone I've had the opportunity to work with in other capacities. How many years? Uh, many years. Uh, Charles had uh, dark hair then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I dyed the hair to get the job. Exactly. Right? Exactly. exactly. I still have hair. Uh, but he is a can-do person, somebody who's very passionate about this work uh, and who has grown this organization uh, and reaching more corners of the Commonwealth uh, to make sure our veterans get everything they need. So it's my honor to introduce uh, Charles Gagnon, the CEO, President and CEO of VOA. Thank you. Yeah, I know, I know. We've shaken hands several times. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Um, I just want to just welcome everyone. My name is Charles Gagnu. I'm the President and CEO of Volunteers of America and we go by VOA Mass. We're the owner and operator, and we're one of the most significant partners with certainly John and his team and the rest of the state uh, partners. So I just want to welcome everyone here. This is a big day for us. This is really, it's just great to have so many people that are committed to ending homelessness be here on a hot, sweaty day. John, good job in the HVAC system, thank you. <laughs> but it's really gonna take a team, a collaborative effort, and I, it really starts with leadership and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, the Healy and Driscoll administration, you guys are getting it done. You're bringing people together across agencies. That's not historically correct, right? So we're talking about integrating and really bringing in partners, state agencies with leadership to end this problem. And I think it's within, well within our reach. So thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to thank the innovative leadership team. Um, I've had experience both with Secretary Augustus and Secretary Santiago. I believe that the integration of these two agencies is the secret sauce. I think it provides a powerful partnership, but also promise to wed housing plus services. It's not just about housing, like Ed re referenced, it's about comprehensive services, mental health, substance use disorder, food insecurity, housing stability, health stability. That's our motto at VOA Mass, and I, I really feel like it is the right motto at the right time to approach veterans who are homeless. I also want to thank Mayor Ballantyne. She was here for almost two hours. <laughs> One of our veterans was telling the story. She and I were both reduced this, to tears. This was a year ago. It was today. a year ago, not today. <laughs> or a couple years ago. Yeah. But the city of Somerville has been an amazing partner and host. When we need something, they act. They drop by and just say hello and fellowship. And you know, our motto, if you go to our website, it's <laughs> VOA, our motto is care today, opportunity tomorrow. Care today, opportunity tomorrow. What does that mean? That means each and every day we're providing care to Melvin and his residents in the city of Somerville, and we're prepare, preparing them for opportunity. And we have so many success stories as folks come through the Mass Bay Veterans Center, move into permanent housing, follow them with stabilization services, making sure they secure employment. And our model is one of whole person care. And what does that mean? We treat the entire person, the interconnectedness between health, behavioral health, housing, employment, and we bring those all together to make sure that everyone, all of our, all of our residents, Melvin, right, are gonna achieve greater self-sufficiency and chase their dreams like anyone else in this room. So we are certainly committed to that. And last but not least, I want to acknowledge, first of all, the other veterans that are here. We have a variety of veterans. They've served our country. So thank you, veterans, and we're here for you today. I'd also like to thank um, our VOA Mass team. We have several people. Thank you, Hannah. Several people that have helped out, in, in particular, our Mass Bay Veterans Center, Howard Bennett, Program Director. Let's hear it for the, the, the Mass Bay Veterans Center. I can't do my job without an active uh, board of directors, and our newest board member is David Rockwell right back there. David, thank you very much for being here and supporting us. And I just want to be I'm just really grateful to the commitment um, from the Healy and Driscoll administration. This is a breath of fresh air for me. I've been doing this work a long time. I'm not going to stop until we get there. Uh, I believe that the solution has to involve integration, whole person care, and I think we owe it to provide comprehensive services that are dignified, meet folks where they're at. These folks have served us, served our nation, and they certainly deserve everything and then some. So I want to thank everyone, but I have the honor of introducing the next speaker. And his name is Melvin Blanchard. Melvin is a 
just an amazing person with an amazing story. He came to our doors. We've opened up our doors from him. We've embraced him. And Melvin, do you want to share a few words? Yes, do. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here we go. Live theater. Come on. No, Melvin, yes. take it away. Thank you, Charles. I, I, I'm just uh, full of gratitude, you know, and, and to thank everybody would take more than my two minutes. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> you know, but the mayor and the governor and, all, and the VA, you know, uh, I'm just amazed and I'm full of gratitude because I, I met the mayor several times, but I guess, she, you know, she shook so many hands all the time, you know, and not know my name. I didn't get a chance to tell her. I'm Melvin with a Y, not an I. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm, I just got to share my gratitude. Like, I, I, I'm a Vietnam veteran. I'm not using, you know, you know, no heroism, you know, nothing like that, you know, to make me no hero. But, you know, VOA and, and the state and the city made me a survivor. You know, I was out there for 40, 45 years or more struggling. I spent a year in Jersey homeless. I spent a year in West Virginia homeless. I spent a year in New York State homeless. A year in Rhode Island. And uh, I finally found this place online, VOA. You know, and I, I did a little research. I was amazed. So I reached out to the VA up here. You know, I was having a heart problem among many, <laughs> you know. but. I just wanted to say this, to make a long story short. Being a Vietnam veteran, a veteran period, that's having traumas and troubles like PTSD, like so many of us do, getting ourselves settled is amazing. But the homeless programs that I've been into, you know, a year, I could never get myself together. But I'm so grateful for VOA Charles and everybody here, Mindy and, and Howard and Anthony, uh, I can go on and on. You know, there, there's so many people here. It would be, but the point I want to stress is that I'm grateful that there's programs like this that afforded me the opportunity. You know, my heart in trouble. I got my new <laughs> prosthesis. You know, and I finally, after all this time, I finally got my BTS, PTSD under control, so to speak, you know. I can mean, I find moments of peace because the staff here at VOA helped me to show me the places to go to take care of my business, to help me fill out forms, papers, to, to get my life back in order with, you know, caused me not to see the homelessness. I wasn't able to do that. But they afforded me the time. I've been here two and a half years. I never had the chance to spend enough time at getting myself back together. But the staff here helped me get to my doctors, you know, and helped me, you know, uh, talk to things, having a, a collision on staff here. You know, I got my own psych team, you know, the VA, you know, Brockton, you know, Jamaica Plains, you know, that's up there, West, West Roxbury. But the point is that having a place like this, you know, the mayor, you know, she, she had a cookout for us, you know, I mean, a dinner, you know, for Christmas and, and, and then the, 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 the fireworks. But she, she comes around and does things working with VOA. You know, the VA has really stepped up the game for us. It's hard for us to get into a, a situation looking for how we've got to get back into paying our bills, getting our credit back together. And, and VOA here helped me to establish all that. So I'm just grateful to everybody that here that's making these programs possible, and we need more of them, and to stay consistent like you are. You know what I mean? I know the funding's hard to get, but VOA and everybody need more funding, you know? No, I yeah. second that. Yeah. And, and, it's, and, this, and, and this is what I'm going to leave it like this because I'm so grateful that there's all you professionals that are good at your craft. You know, and you're good at your craft. And I take my hat off to you because you guys care. <laughs> and I thank you. All right. <laughs> thank you, Bob. Wow, thank you, Melvin, for sharing that powerful story and speaking from the heart. And um, that takes courage, and he did a splendid job. 
So I think Melvin's a good example of the work that we're doing here, our partners that are here. It's challenging work, but we're committed to the very bone to getting this right and getting this done. And we're going to double our efforts with these three leaders in particular, Lieutenant Governor, Secretary Santiago, Secretary Gustus. We're with you. We're going to go all the way. So I just want to say thank you once again. This ideal of chasing to end homelessness is something within our grasp. If any place can do it, it's Massachusetts. So let's make sure that we stay committed through the good times and bad times. We know we have a very aggressive timeline. The quicker we do this and the quicker we can create more housing across the board, the less likely people will be homeless, in particular individuals without children, in particular with the veterans today we're talking about. So all I want to say is thank you. Please stick around. If anyone wants a tour, grab one of our staff, and let's keep the work going together. Thank you very much.